In this class, we're going to take a look at the roots of a quadratic function. So as a reminder, a quadratic function is in the form f of x equal to a quadratic expression. And in general, a quadratic expression is ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are some numbers. And the b and the c values can be zero, leaving you with just basically an x squared term. And that would still be good enough to be classed as a quadratic function. What we want to do in this class is consider a little more the graphs of the quadratic functions. And if you've not already watched the introductory class to this topic, maybe check that out and then come back in here where I kind of give an overview of what types of graph these quadratic functions make. If not, then just follow along here and it'll probably all kind of make sense anyway. So this is our general quadratic function. When we start to think about the graphs of functions, we change the f of x notation into y. And that's basically just because f of x is thinking of this as a function, like a rule. But one of the things we do with functions is to then use the rule to generate points on a graph. When we're talking about points on a graph, we use an xy graph, an xy axis. So we change the f of x to y. So in a function's graph, the input values are the x values. Those are the values you're putting into the function. And the f of x values are the y values, the up and down values on the graph. They're the output values, the values you get out of the function. So that's what a function is. It's an input-output machine. You put numbers in here for x, you work out what you get, and you get a y value that goes with that. So every x value has got a y value. And those x, y combinations, those pairs, are the points on the graph. So we've changed our f of x to y, so now we're thinking about the graph of this function. Well, in general, these guys, these quadratic functions, make parabolic graphs, which are graphs which are shaped like a u, like a u-shaped kind of graph. And what we're talking about in this class are the roots of the graph of a quadratic function. The roots are where the graph cuts over the x-axis, so it's these key points here. So these are called the, the roots. So one of the primary techniques to do with quadratic functions is to find the roots of their graph. So if you think about it, those points are on the x-axis, so therefore they don't have any height, they don't have any y value, they're not up going anything up the way or down the way, or in other words they've got a y value of zero, an up and down value of zero. So we know that the coordinate of that point there is some x value, let's call it x1, and zero for the y value. We know that the coordinate for this guy here is some other x value, let's call it x2, and a y coordinate of zero. So any point along the x-axis has got a y coordinate of zero. So if you're on the x-axis, then your y value is zero. So that gives us a method for finding the roots of the graph of a quadratic function <clears throat> just by saying, right, let's force the y to be zero just by substituting a zero in here for y, keeping everything else the same, and then there must be something in that that then allows us to find these x values. And it's basically just that once you've substituted in that zero, you've now turned this from a quadratic function into a quadratic equation. If you now solve that quadratic equation, the values that you get will be the two x coordinates of your two roots. It doesn't always have to be two. There can sometimes only be one root. That would be where you've got a parabola coming down and just touching the x-axis and then going back up. Sometimes you don't even have any roots. That's when a parabola, say, comes down like that and turns uh, its turning point just floating somewhere in space. So these points are called the turning points where the graph changes direction. We're not so much focused on those in this class. So I've put the zero in here. Usually when we're doing quadratic equations, the zero's on the right. It doesn't really matter, but if you're more comfortable spinning that around, then go ahead and do that. So the process really is substitute zero in. So once you've subbed in a zero, that is now set up to find the roots of this parabola. Factorizing this one into two brackets because it's a trinomial. If you're not sure about the factorizing and you're not sure about solving quadratic equations, you might want to check out those classes first because what we're doing now is we're, yeah, we're talking about the graphs of quadratic functions here. We're talking about roots in particular, but essentially these are going to turn into quadratic equations. So the two topics kind of go together. If you're not sure about the quadratic equations, then maybe follow along with these and then see what you make of it. If you're still not sure, 
check that the, to uh, the class is dedicated to that topic. So this one would factorize with a six and a two and a plus, oh no, sorry, and a minus and a minus. So minus six, minus two, and then solving that to get a plus six and a plus two. Again, if you're not sure what I did there, you can check that out in another class. So now that we've got those, we know that we can make kind of coordinate pairs because we know that to find those, we had already let the y value be zero. So that means that we're gonna get coordinates six zero for one of the roots and two zero for the other root. We could then take that further if we wanted to and actually sketch a quick graph of that function. So just by knowing those two roots, we now know pretty much what the function looks like. So those are the two roots. So that's two along, zero up, six along, zero up. We know that it's a parabola. We know that it's got a positive x squared term. So positive x squared terms, if it's a positive x squared term, it's a parabola like this, which has got a minimum turning point. If it's a minus x squared term, which most of them are not, then it's like that, uh, upside down parabola, and it's got a maximum turning point. We've got a positive, so we're like this. So that tells us that our function graph would go down something roughly like that. So that's essentially what we're doing in these questions. You might even want to put a line in here where you say something like, let y equal zero for the roots. You don't have to do that. It's maybe a good practice. I'll maybe do it for this one as well. So let y equal zero for finding the roots. Okay, so we're just gonna take the same approach with these two examples here. So we're gonna let y be zero, substitute that in for y, and then just go ahead and solve the equation. Spin it around if you like, or you could just flip the zero to the other side there. And I'm gonna go ahead and factorize these into two brackets. So we would need an x and an x. For this one, a five and a three. We need a positive five and a minus three, giving us solutions to the quadratic equation of x equals minus five and x equals positive three. So those are our two um, x coordinates of our roots. So full coordinates again would be minus five, zero, and three, zero. Be careful with questions with these because sometimes a question will say, find the x coordinate of the roots. Sometimes it will just say, find the roots. You've got to be careful whether you need to stop at this point or to stop or to go as far as that point. Again, if you wanted to draw a graph of that, you could just plot those points on an xy axis. So minus five, let's roughly say that's going to be there. Positive three, let's say that's going to be there. It's a positive x squared term, meaning that it's going to go down something like that. Be a little bit careful with the turning point for that one because this, remember, was minus five. This was at three. So that does not mean that the symmetry would be on the y-axis. The symmetry, and um, this line of symmetry, which is something we'll talk about in a subsequent class, would be just a little bit to the left um, as we're looking at it to the left of the y-axis. So that turning point should be there. It's very tempting to make the turning point on the y-axis. That's a really common mistake because it's very close, um, but just make sure you've got it turning at the right point. Okay, and then finally, let's take a look at this guy. We're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna sub in zero for y, put in the line there in red if you like. Slightly different this one in the sense that we don't have a trinomial. So the quadratic expression here was a trinomial. So was this guy. But remember I said earlier that the b and the c don't even have to be there. This time the b is zero and then the c is negative 36. It just means that when we factorize it, we factorize in a different way. This one's actually a, a difference of squares. So a difference of squares, another factorization technique. If you're not sure about that one, check out the class on that. If you do know how to do it, then that's fine. It looks like this. And we would get two solutions, x equals positive six and x equals negative six. These ones are quite interesting in terms of the graph because when you factorize a difference of squares, you always get the same number, but with a different sign. So that means that when you solve for the roots, you always get the same number, but with a different sign as well. So that means that when we come to plot them, they're gonna be symmetrical around the y-axis. So negative six, let's pretend that's like here. Positive six is gonna be the same distance over the other way. So let me try and get that reasonably accurate. And then the parabola would have to go straight 
down through the, the middle there, so something like that. So this one will have its turning point right on the y-axis because of the, the symmetry of the, of the points. So that's basically how you find the, the roots of a quadratic function or the roots of the graph of a quadratic function. It might be uh, expressed in those terms. Just remember, it really just means where does the graph cut over the x-axis? And the absolute key is just to remember that that occurs where y equals zero. That is really the main thing. Conversely, if you wanted to find where a graph cuts over the y-axis, like these points, you would let the x be zero. So basically, if you're on the x-axis, your y-value is zero. If you're on the vertical, the y-axis, then your x-value is zero. In this class, we've only looked at the, the roots, so where the y is zero. In a subsequent class, we'll look at the y-intercept, where the parabola cuts over the y-axis, the vertical axis. And for those points, we're going to let the x be zero. So both the, me the methods are both basically the same, just using the other um, letter equal to zero. So make sure that makes sense to you. This is a really key technique, a key topic um, in the quadratic topic and in functions. So spend some time making sure that you understand what's all going on there and then definitely scope out some practice questions on this topic.